Hi guys, welcome back to Derby Kite. So uh, today we're going to do part two of the uh, spring maintenance. Let's get the shed open. <coughs> right, so um, right, what I wanted to do today is uh, firstly say a big thank you for everybody who commented on the last video uh, and uh, give me some. So I've got notes, there's <laughs> a lot I need to remember today. Um, and uh, give me some suggestions and comment some comments on the, um, the amount of muck that come out the bottom drain and on the easy pod uh, they come up with some good uh, some good suggestions and comments uh, to try and out combat that um, so there's a, a, a few things we can I can try uh, and need to do uh, but there's a couple of things I want to do first firstly the bottom drain um, one of the reasons I think might be that there was um, stuff in the, the bottom drain over the winter period. Um, if you're watching my pre previous videos uh, before the uh, getting ready for winter, uh, when the covers went on and the temperature started to drop, I actually low lowered the uh, flow rate down uh, into the filters. Uh, obviously, with an easy pod, um, instead of can it's a maximum flow rate of around between like five six thousand liters uh, flow rate on it uh, and during the winter I actually lower that down um, but obviously because there was as much food there was actually no food going in when the temperatures dropped um, so I actually lowered the flow rate down because there was no need for it to be so high uh, and obviously the ponds were the uh, pond was covered uh, and lowering the flow rate down in my mind was I'm not drawing as much warm water which is you know potentially at the bottom uh, and cooling it down as much because i'm not flowing it through as quick um, so that was my uh, reasoning behind it but as were temperatures are starting to warm up now i have up the flow rate uh, and obviously with this filter as well and my new um, moving bed filter i have now up the flow rate again and what we at at the moment and have a quick look it'll work uh, we're at a total flow rate of 70 so about 70 percent so that's between the easy pod and that uh, backy river so I'm now up to I'd say the easy pods at its maximum now um, to help you know any faster the water will just be going far, through it far too fast and you won't be catching any of the fines or a lot of the fines anyway it won't catch as many so I didn't have it too wide so that's what we're at at the moment and I think that could be part of the reason why um, the bottom drain had so much stuff in it and when I'm using my um, jet wash as I do if you're going to purge your bottom drain and you, if you've got a valve to open and you can just purge it through a four inch uh, drain a uh, four inch valve and you can just purge all the water out which gets a lot of muck out uh, if I'd have done that yes I'd have still got some of it out but I don't think I would have got as much as I, I uh, have, have done using the jet wash because it's high pressure um, and it's actually blasting the pipe as well just purging it you'll get all the the stuff that's just settled there but there's actually stuff uh, I believe that's actually sticks to the pipe that purging the drain may not get out so me jetting it out with the uh, drain cleaner uh, I think it actually gets a lot more of that than it would have done if I could just purge it um, which I can't really do as such with my setup uh, so I think doing that anyway I'd have got more out than just purging it anyway um, so that's that uh, as for the easy pod if you remember again in a previous video I installed this pump I only this was the one that was on it the 70 litre originally which came with the easy pod I um, all I was running I was running the bottom drain in the pond and it was too much so I'd, I had to put a valve on it to reduce the flow into the pond and what was uh, the rest of it was just being gassed off to air I was then using it to bowl the easy pod Obviously, it did the great job because that's what it's meant to do. That's what the manufacturer says. Uh, so I thought, well, I'm wasting all that air and energy on this one. So I bought the smaller one just to run the bottom drain, um, really. And again, that was still too powerful for the bottom drain for what I need. So again, I was still gassing some of it off. And I thought, well, I'll just try it anyway. I'll try and see if it will bowl the bottom, the easy pod. I didn't expect it to, but it did. So my thinking was, great, I'll run the both. I was still gassing some off and running the bottom drain and do it on the easy pod. So potentially 
you know, it could be down to me, um, it's obviously my fault, that yes, it bowled the, the easy pod, the 45 litre, but maybe there's just wasn't enough air to get all the way down to the bottom. It was boiling the media up, but it wasn't. It was boiling up, as I thought, but maybe not enough to clear all the bottom sediment on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the 45 running the bottom drain of the pond and my moving bed, as I am at the moment. And then I'm going to, as you can see, all this is wired in, but it's actually not connected here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to connect this to the easy pod. And when I need to clean the easy pod, I'm going to use the 70 litre. And I'm running at that just for a, a couple of months maybe. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the media back out again and see what's at the bottom of the easy pod. Um, and if it's if it's hardly any, then I'll stick to that and keep on with that. Uh, again, I've had some other suggestions. I've people saying using a, um, a brush on a long stick, which I do to clean the outer chamber. I have used that, but I haven't done it on the inner chamber. So in a couple of months, I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm not going to do any more than that. Then just change onto the bigger pump and in a couple of months i'm going to check it and if there's still a little bit of sediment then yes okay potentially i need to do something else so then i'll um, try the stick see if that does it but there's also a couple of other ideas i've got for myself and some other suggestions i've had things to try uh, i think one of them was like turn the air uh, this is the airing at the bottom where the holes at the top you could potentially turn that over so the air is actually pushing down before it comes up yes that's a, an option and might be worth something I can try, see if it works, I don't know. Uh, but there's a couple of ideas as well that I've got myself that are um, a bit more involved than that. Uh, but again, that's something to look down, uh, later down the line. Um, so yeah, that's where we are at the moment. Um, so I'm just reading my thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's just on what happened with the last video and where I am and what things I, uh, I'm doing now to hopefully combat that. Right, so um, things for today. Let me turn you around and I'll uh, show you a couple of things in here first. Right, uh, firstly I want to mention my dechlorinator. Again, as it's coming to spring now, there's certain things that I would normally do this time of year, or have done. One of them is changing my uh, filters in my dechlorinator. Uh, if you watch my previous video on my uh, filter build you see actually had to, had to move this so it all came apart so this ha actually has had its new filters in there but this is the perfect time to do them now um, as, as you all know I've got my trickling system which is from here and it's if I can show you I'll take the lid off this and get it off as you can see there here that's my trickling system and that is going 24 7 so um, it is a good time of the year to be changing the dechlorinator filters, which I have done. Um, and since I had these dechlorinators, I don't know if you can see there, and on that one, for some unknown reason, these two have leaked. It's only a little drip, you know, a little, very small drip, every now and again. Um, you know, as you can see, it's a bit of build-up of water. I don't know why. I've checked all the seals inside, the O-rings, and they're still in there, uh, the internal ones. Um, honestly I think they could do with a seal on this one here so uh, I'm gonna have to I have put PCFE tape oh ice cream bloody hell <laughs> we had nothing it was what 22 degrees the other day uh, not an ice cream van inside we've now dropped down to 9 and 10 degrees and the ice cream man's out unbelievable <laughs> anyway um, as I said yeah I think that could do with some sort of a seal around here uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can find um, some suitable sheeting of rubber and make my own discs that will fit in there to seal it. And like I say, I put PTFE tape around the thread, quite a bit to be honest. Um, but it's such a thick thread, whether I need, might be worth trying a bit more first to try. Take them all apart again and put some more PTFE tape on, I don't know. Um, there's either, if I can't find any rubber, the other option is to tape them down unscrew them slightly so you know and so much down to about here so so much of the threads is visible then run a bead of silicon all the way around on them wait for the silicon to go off tighten them back up and hopefully that will cause a uh, seal obviously I'd have to I'd use uh, fish safe um, silicon 
so yeah that's that's the options but I have seen some others that have problems with these leaking I don't know why I mean apart from that they're absolutely fantastic the chlorinator but I really do think I need some sort of a seal around here um, again I've got my tap up here and it's not on high pressure at the tap it's on you know turned on in the house because this, this pipe runs into the house um, it's not turned on fully it's only just open and as so is that so there's not a high pressure that I think is going through there because you know uh, obviously it's coming out so it's not under constant pressure it is relieving it but, but yeah slight problem something I need to sort out but I have changed the filters in those and again if you're watching my previous video you can see how bad especially this one was the first one um, as I said we do get a lot of uh, water cuts and things around here and when it comes back on the water comes through as a, at a strange colour um, and obviously if I'm not here when that happens this is running so it's running through here so this is really is doing its job it's not letting any of that dirty nasty water into the pond um, secondly my UV and it's talked a bit about that now we're coming into the spring this is the perfect time to be changing bulbs in your UV systems um, obviously I've got my EVA 55 I've also got the one in my easy pod which is I think it's from remember rightly it's an 18 I think it's an 18 watt UV in there uh, I only fitted this last June I believe it was actually fitted it uh, so it ran for June I'm trying to work out four maybe five months before the temperature started to drop and the covers went on and as soon as the covers went on I turned this one off and turned this one on but so that was just before the winter and uh, so that's had four or five months of use or so far since I've had it something like that five I can't work it out now five six months at the most um, and this one ran from the winter but this was replaced uh, just before Christmas so this had a brand new UV over the winter period obviously this isn't on now so that's had uh, where are we March oh, four months maybe of use out of this one and this one's had five maybe six so I, I believe there's plenty left in that one for the summer so I'm going to keep my eye obviously my water's crystal clear um, so I'm going to keep my eye on it through the, through the summer see how it goes um, potentially I would have changed that now if I, I you know if I had it running over the winter I definitely would have changed that uh, but I've had like I say for the last three months or so that one's actually been off so it hasn't had any use so I think the bulb's okay but is a potential time to be changing it or the perfect time as I said this one was running for uh, so long and again next winter again I'll do exactly the same again when my covers go on so it's not getting as much sunlight that one will go off and this one will go on but this one won't need changing again because this has only had like three four months worth but next spring this time next year that will definitely have a new one um, unless I start to have problems with my um, water changing colour and not being as clear as it is then I'll potentially think okay it either needs changing or I need to clean out the uh, quartz glass I'll check that first um, see how we go right um, before I start the jobs for today I have had a delivery firstly I bought this for the pond uh, a floating thermometer I have got the one inside as you've seen before that takes the temperature um, but I can't always see that through the window so I have to go inside um, so when my covers are up and off or off I can just a quick look as me going into the filter house I can just pull this out and have a quick look at that and it'll give me a, a good temperature read so that was the one thing uh, the other thing I bought uh, first I gotta say thank you to Andy at Koi Diaries for recommending this there you go I bought myself a net a new net uh, I did have a small one I used for fishing before landing it wasn't really worth uh, a greatest one so I bought this one um, yeah it, it's a big one <laughs> um, I thought I ordered the 60 centimeter but my mistake I pressed on the wrong one and ordered the 80 so fingers crossed mine will grow big enough for that net um, if not and I see a heron I'll just put that over the entire pond I'm sure it's big enough to cover the, the whole pond uh, but it is a very good net a good recommendation from Andy uh, good st sturdy pole quite, you know extends out to I think three meters so well chuffed with that one 
um, I'll be using that shortly no doubt uh, if I need to get my fish out I want to take them out this year anyway I want to have a look at them in the bowl measure them up again uh, and give them a good check over when the weather warms up a little bit I don't do it at the moment to stress them out but when the weather warms up a bit more and we've got more stable temperatures and the covers are off that's a definite I'm going to do um, so jobs are good okay first job on the agenda I've took the part of my covers off don't worry they will be going back on um, I've just folded that one over I'm going to keep the middle one on for now um, but first thing I want to do is get the vacuum out I want to give the bottom a little vacuum and if you can see from this it's not that bad at all uh, a couple of little bits you can see down there little bits here and there and there's a little bit in the, just under the, down the bottom over there so I want to give it a quick clear out get that out ready um, again I don't know if you can see from here but I there's no out, uh, algae in there at all whether I don't know what the reasoning behind that whether that's my the amount of clay that I've been using because I do use the clay I've constantly used that all winter um, whether it's that I don't know my Backy River as well whether it's part of that or a combination of both but I haven't suffered with any algae any blanket weed anything like that um, I know a lot of people have suffered throughout the winter with blanket weed and, and things like that but I've been very lucky I haven't had any problems with blanket weed at all on this pond uh, not you know since I think beginning of last spring uh, that was actually before I had uh, my new other for my backy river filter and before I started adding mediclay whether it's anything to do with that I don't know whether I've just been very lucky I really don't know but fingers crossed it will stay that way um, so yeah I do want to I don't know if you, you can't really see from this but I'm going to vacuum the bottom and what I'm going to do is I'm going to vacuum it and I'm going to give it a light brush with I've got a soft brush uh, it will murky the water up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the phone in the water get a slight bit of if I can see if it comes out hopefully a tiny bit of underwater footage you can see how clear the water is hopefully you can see the, if there's anything on the bottom uh, and it's a good way of actually checking on your fish as well I do uh, like to do it occasionally you can sometimes get a better look at your fish with an underwater camera and again it's an ideal time to be checking them for any marks and damage and things like that so have a quick look at that and I'll get this vacuum out
Okay, I just seen a vacuum in the pond out. The reason I went around with the brush because you can't get everything with the uh, vacuum, doesn't get it all out. So I just wanted to clear the sides off mainly. Um, anything that's stuck on the side of the pond. Uh, the filters will get that out in no time. Um, but I just want to show you, I did put a net on the bag. So I wouldn't lose so much water. Uh, I know there's no major stuff in there. But that's what it got out through the winter. Um, that was any algae that was in there that died off and bits of poo that uh, didn't get stuck down the bottom drain. So obviously there's all sorts of, it is a line now, so there's uh, little creases and bits and pieces in there which does hold little bits but vacuum and it gets it out. So that's what it got out for now, so I'm glad I've done that. Another job done. Right, next job. Actually I took my uh, top off because I'm going to get my arms wet. I need to get the, I want to put the lilies back in the pond, so it's going to be bloody cold. Right, let's get them in. These have been in storage around the back. I do take them out in the winter. I'll cut them back and I put them in a, a tub around there, but as you can see, they're starting to sprout now and come through, so I want to get them in the pond. Uh, I'll drop them in for now and I'll reposition these at a later date when the uh, lilies start to grow I can get them in the right position. So that's one in, I'll go and get the other one. Okay this is the second basket as you can see it's got the new growth on for this year. Um, if you look at it you can see the mesh on top I put this on because I initially had the small, um, you can probably see a few in there, uh, some of the small pebbles in there to stop them rotating around but it didn't work they were still going in there and I was finding them in the bottom of the pond so I put the bigger pebbles in to try and stop it obviously much bigger uh, it helped a lot but they were still having a dig in there so I've put the mesh on and as you can see it can still get through um, these are the European white lilies uh, Nymphalba I think they're called or Nymphia albi or something like that I'm not sure on pronunciation I will try and put it on screen and there'll be a, I'll write it in the description down below. These are very good lilies. Uh, I did, I know a lot of people don't like lilies in their ponds because they uh, fish attack it and rip it to pieces but to be honest they've left these alone. They don't seem to go for these for some reason. Um, also I do put watercress in there. I did last year. Uh, they do nibble at that a little bit so that may be another reason but these are a very good lily um, and they whether the koi don't like chewing them or what, I don't know. But let's get this one in. As I said, I will, when I start to grow, I can reposition the baskets a bit more. I think that's about where I had it last year, somewhere around there. Obviously, this is on the shelf. I've got a shelf here, uh, so it's not as deep. This, I've done that for the lilies. Uh, that's why it hasn't gone down as deep. It's obviously a lot deeper in the, in the centre. But they're on the shelf and I can reposition them uh, when I need to, so jobs are good. Right, um, lilies are in, so what I'm going to do now is put my watercress in. This is the stuff from last year, what's left of it, or part of it. So it's still growing nice and that will really shoot off. Uh, it's a floating basket, I actually made this myself. It's just out of, uh, it was a piece of square foam I had. I cut a square out, a square in the middle. And the material is actually made of a, a snood. A nice brand new clean snood I had, uh, which I don't use. So I stitched that round the side and I think I cable tied the bottom together. And I put a bit of alpha grog in the bottom just to weight it down to help keep it down. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to find the thing. So I'm going to hook that under there. Get it in the water first, be easier. Get it in position. I've got a hook somewhere around here. <laughs> I'm going to find it. There it is. There you go. And I'll just leave that there. And that will grow. Once the cover's off, I'll move that down a little bit further so it doesn't impede the uh, skimmer in any way because it's just drawing stuff in. So that's just in there for now and that's going to grow. I have got two or three of these around the pond. So I just want to get them in for now to help remove any nitrides and stuff from the pond. Another job done. Job's a good one. Right, so Lily's in, watercress is in. I've just put my thermometer in the pond as well. Another job done. Uh, what I want to do now is I want to, 
if you maybe you don't know but I've got a, a float switch uh, it's something I do on a regular basis anyway uh, I need to test my float switch I want to do that I do that every couple of weeks anyway just to make sure it's working um, I think it's a good idea to do that you don't want to find out it's not working when you really need it to be working uh, when you've got a leak or anything like that and it's not going to work so it's just worth making sure they are working on a regular basis so it is something I do so let me spin you around I'll show you the uh, float switch okay so there is my float switch as you can see the water is a little bit murky from the vacuuming and the sweeping of the pond uh, but the filter won't take long to clear that out so there's my float switch so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the filter house and as you can see there's my uh, power supply so what's going to happen now I've got somebody that's going to turn get into the light he's going to turn the float switch off that's it. There you go, power's gone off, everything's gone off on it, so that's all working. Um, he's now going to bring the float switch back up, so hopefully, there you go, power's been reinitialized, and the pump is starting to flow again. So everything's working on that, and that, as you all know from my previous videos, um, my UV and everything is connected to this box, so it shuts everything off, my palm pump my Evo 55 in the summer or in the, the Pod UV as well would be turned off if it's uh, done that so yep that's all working more than happy with that that's another job done as I said that's something I do on a regular basis uh, probably do it every couple of weeks maybe something like that just to make sure there's no problems with it but everything's working it cuts everything out while I'm in here what I will mention if you again you, some of you may know I have got a leak sensor which is uh, connected to my uh, cameras, my pond cams, which are these. This is one of my little my leak sensor I have in my filter house. So if I do have a, a leak anywhere, obviously you know I've got a small leak on this, but it's nowhere near that one, and this is only a small leak. But if that did crack and start gushing out of water, it would. Well, there you go. I've just touched water on my finger, <laughs> so I know that works. <laughs> But I do test these to make sure these are okay and the batteries are okay. Um, I need to get my phone out to show it you. So give me a second and we'll test, give that a proper test. Right, so I've got the leak sensor what I've got. It's a bit of paper with some water on it. Um, and I've got the phone with the app and everything on it. So I'm going to attach it to the water. That'll beep. And instantly I've got a notification. There you go. Filter house to detect water. So, I know the leak sensor is working. I've dried it off and it's told me it's dry. So, if I click on that, on that one, there you go. It tells me water is detected and no longer detected. And it tells me my battery on there. I can check it from there how much I've got in the battery. So, these obviously last quite a while. Uh, so, yeah, happy with that. That's all working fine. Another job done. Jobs are good. Right, I'm putting Mediclay in. As you can see, I've already mixed it. I do use the bottle. I have done a video on why I use this. I just find it much easier to mix. Uh, as I said before, previously, I am on only on half dose, but I have up that now to weekly. So it'll be a good time to get it in. It help with all that uh, vacuum in the bottom of the pond and such. So it help get all that stuff out. And yes, I have got the sock on. Again. If you look back at previous video I'll tell you why I have the sock but let's get this in obviously I put the covers back on so I can't get to the back but this will uh, all go around the pond there you go look nothing in the bottom that's just a bit of fluid nothing stuck in the in there all nice and clear so again that's just half dose Again, as I said, I do that weekly. Uh, but because I have uh, disturbed a lot of any muck that was on the bottom, it's only clouded up a little bit. I will clean my uh, filter floss a little bit later. I'll check on that because, again, that's going to get a lot of them fines out, and especially with the Mediclay as well. So I will check that a bit later on. But that's another, another job done. Right, uh, that's it for the winter, the, uh, not the winter jobs, the spring maintenance jobs for now until the covers coming off uh, talking about the covers 
I've had a few people ask me uh, comments on YouTube and on Facebook uh, when I think I'll be taking my covers off. At the moment, again, it's warmed up quite nice at the moment. Still pretty chilly, but it's nice and bright. We have had some fantastic weather you know, in the 20s, 21, so I think, on the other day. Um, but unfortunately, the weatherman says over the weekend and beginning of next week, temperatures are starting to plummet again. I think we're going to go down to six in the day. And I think one of the dark nights, we've got minus two degrees and even a threat of sleet and snow. So for me, it's going to be a couple of weeks, um, two, maybe three weeks until the weather starts to pick up a bit more and a bit more stable before these come off. Uh, I'll play that by ear. Um, have to see what the weatherman says. Uh, one other thing. I'm just about to tell him. Yeah, OK. OK, OK. I promise you. I'll do it now. Calm down. Fine. Right. My little friend says to tell you, I don't know if you've noticed through this video, there's been a lot of uh, Easter bunnies popping up. Uh, what he wants me to do, and busily, I've says, the first one to email me to this email address below, which is darbykai.competition at gmail.com. The first one to email me with the correct amount of bunnies that you've seen from the very start of this video, busily as promised, he's going to send you some Easter chocolate. Don't know where it's going to be yet. He hasn't decided. So, count the yeah, Easter bunnies, send me an email, and the winner will get some lovely Easter chocolate. So, that's it for now. So, if you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget, press that little bell for your notifications. And I also have got a Facebook page if you want to pop over to there and check that one out. Thumbs up would be great. So, until the next one, don't forget, Sunday. Don't eat too much chocolate. Have a fantastic Easter. Jobs are good.